Our thought for today, as frustrating as it is to wear a mask, it would be even more frustrating if we were Vincent van Gogh. It's hard to wear a mask with only one ear. Today is February 23rd, the feast day of one of the great early bishops and martyrs and heroes of the Catholic Church, St. Polycarp, born around the year 60 AD, martyred around the year 155 AD. He was the Bishop of Smyrna, which is in modern day Western Turkey. And St. Polycarp is considered one of the three great apostolic fathers of the church. You have Ignatius of Antioch, Clement of Rome, and St. Polycarp. These were the links between the apostles and the early church fathers. So these three are called the apostolic fathers because they learned the faith right from the apostles themselves. We know that St. Polycarp was a disciple of St. John the Apostle, John the Evangelist. He heard John preach. He spent countless hours and days with John the Apostle. And John, as you know, was a witness to the passion, death, and resurrection of Christ. So St. Polycarp was a key link to pass on the faith. We call it in the Catholic Church apostolic succession. We can trace our faith all the way back to, to the apostles. And then Polycarp had a disciple named Irenaeus, St. Irenaeus, who would become one of the fathers of the church and who would write so beautifully about Christ being the new Adam and Mary being the new Eve. We know that uh, St. Polycarp was um, very venerated and well-respected as the Bishop of Smyrna, and he has letters written to him by St. Ignatius of Antioch. You might remember that St. Ignatius was arrested and then taken by ship to Rome, and as they stopped in each port, Troas and Smyrna, he would meet with the Christians and bless them because he was on his way to martyrdom. And Ignatius of Antioch met with Polycarp when he came into port. Polycarp blessed Ignatius and kissed the chains that were holding Ignatius. We even have a letter from Ignatius to Polycarp entrusting the Diocese of Antioch to Polycarp. We also know that St. Polycarp traveled all the way to Rome and met with Pope Anicetus to discuss the date of Easter. As you know, the Western Church and the Eastern Church calculate the date of Easter in different ways. And the Pope and um, Polycarp agreed to have the East and the West sep to honor the resurrection of the Lord on separate days. And that was fine with the, the Pope. Around the time of Marcus Aurelius, a violent persecution broke out in Asia and Asia Minor. And uh, Polycarp being the, the bishop told Christians to not expose themselves to martyrdom, to not presume on the grace of martyrdom, but to try to keep a low profile and, and live their faith as best they could. But of course, if they were <clears throat> ever asked to deny their faith, they should refuse to deny their faith. And that's what happened with Polycarp. He was arrested as the bishop. He was 86 years old at the time. He was taken into the stadium with thousands of people and told to proclaim Caesar is Lord you know, Caesar Eliasim, and he refused to do that. He refused to offer incense to the pagan gods and say that Caesar was Lord. And because of that, he was uh, burned at the stake. When the flames did not uh, destroy his body, he was pierced through the heart with a lance, and that um, was ultimately how he died, uh, both being burned and being pierced by the sword. Right before he died, he said to the people, for 86 years I have served Christ and he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my King and my Savior? So he was willing to go to his death, the good shepherd who laid down his life for his flock on today's date, February 23rd. I'll give you a blessing now with the relic of St. Polycarp. And we see this wonderful bishop and martyr, this great shepherd who laid down his life for Christ and for his flock. And I think it's important to read the early writings of the church. I encourage you to read the writings of Ignatius of Antioch, Clement of Rome, St. Polycarp. You can go online and 
Polycarp wrote a beautiful letter to the Philippians, just like St. Paul wrote to the Philippians. It takes about 15 minutes to read, and it's a very beautiful letter. And there you see um, the great messages of love and forgiveness that I'm sure Polycarp learned from the Apostle St. John. And it was the fathers of the church and the apostolic fathers that helped to convert Cardinal Newman, who's now St. Henry Newman in the Oxford movement. When many Anglicans began to research the early history of the church, they realized that the early church was Catholic. And, and in most recent years, over a thousand or 2000 Protestant ministers have become Catholic as well, primarily by reading the early apostolic fathers and the fathers of the church, because they see in reading about the early church that it had the seven sacraments, it had the Pope, it had bishops, it had priests, it had deacons, it had devotion to Our Lady, it had you know, the Holy Eucharist, and these things helped to convert souls to the faith. So read the early writings of the Church Fathers. Through the intercession of St. Polycarp, Bishop and Martyr, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.